Hello, this is the Trade Site U.S. Stocks and Futures Market Preview and Domestic Economic Data Roadmap for the week beginning Monday, the 4th of May, 2014, and ending Friday, the 8th of May. Hope you had a good trading week. We did here at Trade Site. We got uh, had a nice week in general. A couple of nice opening sessions, a couple of days that were good start to finish. Uh, and that's despite having the Fed meeting and the end of month and all that junk that comes with that. Good news is, as we look through uh, into the next week, we don't have a Fed meeting. We don't have the first look at GDP. We don't have a bunch of earnings for earnings season. We don't have an end of month or end of quarter. So it is a straightforward trading week. So hopefully that'll be good for us. Let's start by looking at the ES front month futures contract. This is the daily chart. And the unfortunate part is we are still right in the middle of this nar narrow and annoying range that we've been in. Uh, going back really all the way till December of last year for the most part. Um, you know, you can look at uh, December, January, and part of February were one, and then we kind of shifted up a couple of points for the rest of February, March, and April. But, you know, you've been bouncing around in an 80-point range for two and a half months, and then prior to that, it was an 80-point range, a little lower. So that picks you into you know, maybe 100 and, uh, 150, 140-point range on the S&P since, really since the start of November even. Uh, that's really kind of boring. And the volume has been light in the market. We know that. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, so, anyways, we gained 22 on Friday after selling off on Thursday uh, to start the month of May. We we're up here. Uh, we got a 65 point gain on the NDX on uh, on Friday. Those are both after a gap up. We'll look at that in a moment. Sox gained 19, recovered a bit from being down. The biotechs have been getting clobbered ever since Rich's 13 sell signal. They gained back 99 points finally. Uh, Google was up two. 0.39 after selling off the rest of the week. Apple recovered 3.8 points after also selling off sharply the rest of the week. Uh, take a look at the VIX down $1.85 back into the lows of the year. That's not really a bullish sign for the market. Here's the uh, crude oil down a little bit at uh, 57.58. No, sorry, 59.25 moving average, 57.58. Uh, gold, gold was down a little bit as well. And here's a look uh, at the trend. Uh, where, oops, sorry, the trend where the 10-day uh, moving average of the trend is now down to 0 .86, 0 0.96. Remember, a 0.85 reading, if it's a 10-day moving average, is uh, really negative for the market. When we had one of those back in February, it did top the market. We just didn't sell off much. We'll see if we get it here again and what it does for the market from there. Here's a look at uh, daily volume. Uh, Thursday was the big one for the end of the month at two, just over 2 billion shares. Finally, a, an over 2 billion share day the 1st of April. Uh, the first day of April over that volume. Uh, and we had some other days this week. Volume was definitely better. The 10-day uh, moving average of volume is heading back up. It had dipped as low as uh, almost 1.5 billion shares in the middle of the month. Now it's back to 1.75. So that's much improved. And that's why this week, I think, was a little bit better. But we were out of earnings season, and that does provide us with some, some better opportunities in general. All right, let's look at the uh, intra-week action. We're going to go to 10-minute charts here uh, on the uh, ES and the NQs just to see what we did. And here you go. Um, started the week with a small gap up, filled that and went lower. Monday was good for us. Tuesday opened flat, lower, came back up, closed at the high of the day. Wednesday gapped down, uh, moved around a lot. Remember, this was the Fed announcement day. Didn't react to the Fed at all, did not fill the gaps either uh, from the morning. Uh, Thursday, small gap down, never filled it, bounced around and pushed lower in the afternoon. And then Friday, the gap up, came back up to fill the gap from the prior day. So we still have a gap from Wednesday morning at 21.12. We still have a gap from Friday morning at 2081, let's call it, 2082. Uh, so gaps both ways that could draw the market. Remember, 95% of gaps fill within five days, so be aware of that. Here's a look at the NASDAQ side uh, where we did gap up Monday, filled it, sold off and filled it. Tuesday, no gap. Uh, Wednesday also did not fill that gap. Thursday, uh, we also did not fill that gap down. That's a little different than the ES side. Friday, uh, gapped up and did not fill that. So there's three gaps open on the NQs for the week. Uh, all right, so let's take a look at uh, our economic data that's coming out this week and kind of get an idea of what to look forward to. Monday, factory orders 30 minutes in, not a big deal. Tuesday, trade balance an hour before the bell. That's a big number. It can gap the market. And then ISM services 30 minutes in, also something that can move the market. May 6th, that's uh, Wednesday, the mortgage MBA mortgage index, ADP employment change, uh, product uh, productivity, preliminary productivity, unit labor costs, and crude oil inventories. Thursday, Challenger Job Cuts, the weekly initial and continuing jobless claims data, natural gas and consumer credit. And then Friday, another big important number, that's the uh, non-farm payroll number along with the unemployment rate. And then wholesale inventories 30 minutes in. So it's Tuesday and fr Friday with the biggest numbers coming out. 
and be aware of that. Uh, we don't have anything else to look at, really. That's it. It's a clean week in terms of being in the middle of a month with no weird, awkward things to dig around like Fed meetings and GDP numbers and uh, whatever, holidays and, and whatnot. Next holiday will be a Memorial Day uh, here in the U.S., and that's not until the 25th of the month. So we've got uh, you know three full trading weeks before a three-day weekend. May is usually a good trading month. Um, so we look forward to it. We'll see what we get. We will be in the lab helping you make money. Feel free to stop by. Charts brought to you by eSignal. If you do find these videos useful, please like them on YouTube. It does help us out. Have a great week.